Okay, so thanks to your calendar, you know what you need to get done. Now the question is, when do you get it done? That's where your schedule comes in. This is a silent film which is posted in this week's folder in which a man is trying to figure out how to get all of the rocks, pebbles, and sand to fit into a container. A co-worker suggests that he should put the big rocks in first. If you start with the big rocks, the rest will fit. It's a good analogy for time management. So what are your big rocks? Big rocks are the most important things. These are fixed blocks of time that must be dedicated to a specific thing. If you don't get these things done, bad things will happen. Your class schedule, your work schedule, your study hours, and other regular important obligations are your big rocks. If you don't go to class or study enough for them, you will fail. If you don't go to work, you will get fired. You can't let yourself get distracted from these things. These are things you absolutely cannot let slide. You should make a schedule at the beginning of each semester because your class times and study times will be different each semester. The very first thing you should put into your schedule are your class hours, work hours, and other non-movable tasks. An example of a non-movable task is my son's weekly Boy Scout meeting. I can't decide to do that on a different day or at a different time. The meeting is every Monday at 7. seven. So that's when it has to be in my schedule. But wait, why am I putting this on my schedule instead of my calendar? I'm putting it in my schedule because it meets every Monday at 7. This isn't a one-time thing. If something happens every week, it should go on your schedule. The other thing you need to do is put in your study periods. You need to treat your study time as though it is a class or a job. You need to pre-assign at least one to two hours of study time for every credit hour that you're enrolled. You may not end up needing all of it every week, but you need to block it into your schedule anyway. So put your big rocks into your schedule first. Put in your class hours and your work hours. If you have an asynchronous class like this one, then you need to create your own quote-unquote class time and treat it as though it meets in person. As far as you or anyone is concerned, you are not available during these times. Treat your study time as a big rock. Calculate how many hours of study time you should have and then block off that much time. It can be done before classes, after classes, in between classes, in the, you know, in the evenings, on weekends, whatever. Be honest with yourself about when you will actually study. I never, st study, I never schedule study time for the evenings because my brain just shuts down after dinner. I save that time for things like basic chores and anything else that doesn't require brain power. Study during your high energy times. Once you've scheduled in your most important things, then you can fit in the smaller rocks. These are things like errands, meal prep, exercise, laundry, and emails. These are things that you can fit in whenever you can, and you can often multitask too. For example, you can start a load of laundry and get some exercise done while it's washing. You can answer a few texts or emails while waiting to be called into an appointment. You don't have to explicitly write these small rocks into your schedule, but with your big rocks in place, then it will be easy to see when is a good time to get certain things done. Notice how this person has an early class on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so that's probably not a great time for morning exercise or else they might feel too rushed. But Monday, Wednesday, and Friday they have extra time, so that would be better um, to get a quick 20 to 30 minute jog in. When they are finished with classes on two, uh, uh, sorry, they are finished with classes by 2.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays though, so those afternoons would be good for time consuming things like running errands. If you don't choose what days and times to get these things done, you'll need to get them done at a time that isn't convenient to you. So get a feel for your schedule so that you can settle into a groove that works best for you. By now your schedule is looking pretty full, and you might wonder when on earth you're supposed to have any downtime. 
The beautiful thing is that if you stick to your big rock schedule, then there will be plenty of space for your sand. If it is your study time and you have finished everything that you need to get done and you have half an hour left over, then that leftover time is free time. 100% grade A guilt-free free time. Enjoy it. Kick off your shoes and hop on social media. You've earned it. If you have a job, a full class schedule, and a family, then your schedule is packed. In order to make sure that there is time for everything, you will need to master the arts of minimizing, consolidating, consolidating, delegating, and eliminating tasks. For example, only return emails and calls during a particular period of time each day, maybe 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the afternoon. Multitask by which I do not mean text and drive. Do not text and drive. I mean make flashcards while you're waiting for your laundry to dry. Read your textbook while eating lunch. Quiz yourself while waiting for the bus. Delegate tasks that you don't have to do yourself. If someone isn't pulling their weight, now is the time to hold them accountable. Learn to say no. Don't agree to do things when you know that you'll regret saying that later. Sorry, no, my schedule is packed and I can't commit to that right now. And finally, make a nightly to-do list. For some reason, it's a lot easier to remember what we need to do the day before. Write a quick to-do list before bed so that you don't waste time the next day trying to think of what you should be doing. Speaking of to-do lists, that brings us to the purpose of the weekly planner.